equations with one variable. And manipulating um, equations with variables is something we do constantly in chemistry. So the rules that we're going to use here will come up all the time. Now these are not exactly uh, chemistry equations that we're looking at. However, they are um, the, the same rules apply. And the name, namely, those same rules are everything you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So let's look at several examples. Here, we want to solve for y. So we have 4y plus 8 equals 2y. So the first thing I notice is that y's are on the opposite side. So I want to fix that. So in order to fix that, I subtract 4y from this side and subtract 4y from this side. And I get 8 equals 2y minus 4y is negative 2y. Divide both sides by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and I'm going to just move the y to the other side. y equals negative 4. So again, everything we do to one side, we do to the other. We subtract 4y from both sides, we divide by negative 2 on both sides. Because, zero, zero, because these things are equal, as long as I perform the same mathematical operation to both sides, I haven't violated the rules of math. That's why this works. Let's look at the next example. Here we have 8 times x plus 3 equals 64. Now in the previous order of operations section, we would just add these two numbers. But in this case, 1 is x, so we can't really add x because we don't know what it is to 3. So we need to distribute the 8 through this function. To do that, we take 8 times x, which gives us 8x, plus 8 times 3, which is 24, equals 64. Now we notice we have numbers on both sides and a number with a variable on both sides. So let's combine the number terms without the variable. Minus 24, minus 24. And what we find is 8x equals 40. Divide both sides by 8, divide by 8, x equals 5. So in this way, we can simplify for x. Don't forget that if you have these parentheses, you have to distribute the number um, through. If these were both numbers, you could add them and then multiply, and that would be the same thing. Or you could distribute it through, you'd get the same answer, but it's generally easier to just add them first if they're both numbers. Let's look at another example. Here we have 4z minus 2z times 1 plus 4 equals 36. So we can't forget our order of operations. Remember our order of operations here is we want to do this first. So 1 plus 4 is 5. 2z times 5z is 10z. So what we essentially have is 4z minus 10z equals 36. Well, 4z minus 10z is negative 6z equals 36. And now for the first time, we need to do the same thing on both sides of the equation. So divide by minus 6, divide by minus 6, and z equals negative 6. So we first simplified um, the number inside of the parentheses. We then multiplied it by the z, because multiplication was next. We then added the two z terms together, because they're like terms. And the number without the variable is not a like term, so then we divided both sides by negative 6. So that's essentially how we can solve this problem. Here we have an interesting one. Here we have a number inside of um, absolute value signs. So we need to essentially solve for just the absolute value sign. Once we've solved for what's inside the absolute values, we can then um, solve this equation. So let's isolate what's in the absolute value. So the first thing we want to do is add 5 to both sides. And what we get is 3 times the absolute value of 4w minus 1 equals 15. Now we want to get rid of the 3, so we divide by 3. 3 cancels. Divide by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So now we have the absolute value of 4w minus 1 equals 5. Well, since this is an absolute value, 4w minus 1 could equal 5, or it could equal negative 5, because it would still equal 5 if it's an absolute value. So what we need to do is solve this twice. One case where 4w minus 1 equals 5, and the other case where 4w minus 1 equals negative 5. We have to solve it twice, because if 4w minus 1 equals negative 5, we'll still get 5, because it's an absolute value. And of course, if it equals 5, the absolute value of 5 is just 5, so we'll get the same value. So now, in this case, we add 1, add 1, 4w equals 6, oops, 6, divide by 4, divide by 4, 
W equals 1.5. 6 fourths is 1 and a half. In this case, we add 1, add 1, 4 W equals negative 4, divide by 4, divide by 4, W equals negative 1. So we have two possible answers for W. W could equal 1 and a half, or W could equal negative 1. Because it's an absolute value, oh, I realize I just uh, didn't put that up on the screen. Because it's an absolute value, we don't know if it's 1 and a half or if it's negative 1. So it could be either answer. And if you plug them both in, you'll get the correct value. Let's look at the next one. The next one is similar. Um, it's not similar. The next next one is similar, the one after this. Here, we have two numbers inside of parentheses. So we can do this first. In order to do this um, first, we take 7 minus 2, which is, of course, 5. We then square the 5, and we get 25. We now have 4y times 25 equals 200. Well, 4y times 25 is 100y. 4 times 25, and then just keep the y, equals negative 200. Divide by 100, divide by 100, y equals negative 2. So here, we've um, isolated the y variable. Here, we have now this whole 2x squared, and it's multiplied by negative 1. So we need to square both, square the x and square the 2. 2x squared becomes 2 squared, which is 4, times x squared, which is just x squared. Because it's multiplied by negative 1, we need to multiply by negative 1, so it's negative 4x squared. Now we have the only variable. Negative 4x squared plus 1 equals negative 3. Subtract 1, subtract 1, negative 4x squared equals negative 4. Divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, x squared equals 1. Well, how do we get rid of the x squared? To get rid of the x squared, we take the square root. When we do that, x squared, the square root of it is just x. And the square root of 1 happens to be just 1. Note, though, that whether x was 1 or x was negative 1, you would still get the same answer. So when you take the square root, you have to get both the positive value and the negative value. So you can write it like this, or you could say x equals plus 1 or minus 1. And the reason for that is that squared term there, um, which makes that, which ma makes it, sorry, I realized it went off the screen. The squared term there makes it so it could be plus 1 or minus 1. All right, so we have another um, variable one here, and this is the last one. Here now we have a quarter times 8w minus 42 equals 0. So we can distribute the 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 8w is 2w. So 1 fourth times 8 is 2 times w. Uh, 1 fourth times negative uh, 42 is negative 10.5. And now that equals to 0. Now we can add 10.5 to both sides. Add 10.5. 2w equals 10.5. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. w equals 5.25. So again, we have to distribute that quarter through. You could see here, when we're isolating the variables in these equations, that we need to know order of operations. That's extremely important. So it's um, very important that we know the order of operations. It's also th important that we know things like distributive properties, how to handle uh, things when they're squared or absolute value. Squared does come up in chemistry, absolute value not as much. Um, but these are basically some uh, basic things that are very important skills in chemistry for isolating variables.